Good day everyone, Complaining Gamer here, back again with another look at RPCS3, a PlayStation 3 emulator, this time testing performance of the Ryzen 7 2700X in God of War 3. You'll find my exact system specs outlined in the description below. Since my last video, which took a surface look at how the 2700X behaves within RPCS3, I've learned a bit more about under the hood details which we'll get into in the future, so make sure to subscribe for that. Ryzen is known to increase performance when paired with high frequency low latency RAM, so here I'll be using 16GB of G-Skill Sniper X memory set to 3200MHz CL16. In the BIOS all forms of boosts were turned off and CPU clock speeds were locked to three specific frequencies of 3700, 4000 and 4200 GHz respectively. The AMD Ryzen power plan was on as was the high precision event timer as it no longer makes a difference with Ryzen. Before we jump into the triple screen tests there's a few things you should know about God of War 3 and its current stage of emulation development as well as overclocking the 2700X. If you'd like to skip straight ahead however I'll provide a timestamp below. There are three titles which we can say qualify as tech demos that took the PS3 hardware to its limit and in turn are pushing RPCS3 hard as well. God of War 3, The Last of Us and Uncharted. Metal Gear Solid 4 also presents its own unique emulation challenge. Out of those titles, God of War 3 is currently the most playable. The RPCS3 game compatibility list defines God of War 3 as in-game, meaning that you should expect a whole host of issues when playing it. In terms of graphics and audio on a powerful system, it is in quite a good state with the major issue being intermittent crashing. Arguably, during moments of stability, the game is acceptably playable. The most significant limitation right now is the SPU bottleneck that God of War suffers from within RPCS3. The emulated processor requires optimizing before performance can increase and of course this will take an undefined amount of time. With that said, the game has improved considerably since first booting and undoubtedly will continue to do so. Detailed below will be the RPCS3 build and settings used here. These tests should have been fairly quick but in the end the whole process took much much longer than expected. The main issue was getting the 2700X stable at 4.2GHz with 4.3 being a no go in my particular system which was behaving like a 50 year old woman during the menopause. I was having issues keeping the temperature down. So for anyone out there planning on buying and overclocking a 2700X I highly recommend researching the right case with good airflow mixed with a well reviewed aftermarket CPU cooler. My personal recommendation is that this CPU is optimized in such an intelligent way that there really is very little incentive to overclocking unless you have good cooling. Anyway in the end I finished the tests so here they are. I'll let you watch and then we'll discuss the results after. The audio is coming from the middle screen and the gameplay is taken from the first level. All caches were built in advance and edits were made to try and sync visuals where possible. On screen stats are provided by MSI Afterburner and RTSS.
somewhat unsurprisingly, there is an FPS difference between running the 2700X at 3.7 GHz up to 4.2. The higher clocks decrease latency and naturally increase performance, but the difference isn't huge in the currently demanding God of War 3 at around 5 frames per second. A locked 4 GHz versus 4.2 didn't show much of a boost at all, but still there were a few additional frames. The higher you go in clock speed, the more FPS you can expect, but the 2700X will peak at 4.3 GHz for most users. RPCS3 really responds well to higher clock speeds, but the latency within the CPU itself is also important. Given that Ryzen is known for its performance connection to fast RAM, I did quickly test the game section at a locked 4.2 GHz, setting the memory speeds at 2133, 2667 and 3200. In this instance, I saw no difference at all in FPS between varying memory speeds. In conclusion, God of War 3 is buggy but playable in bursts on the 2700X. Today, you'll achieve between 10 to 30 FPS depending on level location and intensity. As a side note, if you are looking for a smooth God of War 3 experience, the E3 demo plays very well but unfortunately has no connection to the final release of the game. Typically, when left on auto, the 2700X will happily sit at around 4 GHz, and this is where I think most users other than enthusiasts should leave it. The peak gap in FPS came at the top of the cliff, where the difference was around 7 frames. If you ask the question of what's next for God of War 3 in RPCS3, then the answer is more optimizations from the development team which requires patience and time. And remember, this performance snapshot is only relevant for a period of time, hopefully soon to be improved upon. What do you think about how the 2700X is currently performing? Leave your ideas, thoughts and comments down below. If you dislike the content, dislike. If you liked it, leave a like. And to stay up to date with all things emulation, subscribe and hit that bell icon. I'll catch you in the next one.